Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship this morning. It is a beautiful, rainy July morning, and we'll take it for all that it's worth. I'm glad that we're able to be inside where it's dry and wonderful and to celebrate this day. Um, it is part of our Lutheran exercise plan that we tend to sit down, stand up, sit down, and stand up on a regular basis. Pastor Greg, I'm going to ask you to stand up again. This is Pastor Greg Berger. He's the assistant to the bishop that is here to share the good word with us this morning. So if we get a chance to spend a little time and greet him this morning, I would appreciate you do that. And we do thank him being here with us this day. So thank you, Greg. And we do have an opportunity uh, as following our worship service in the fellowship hall. It is our ice cream weekend uh, where we get to celebrate the life of Dominic Walters and the light that he has shed on the life of so many of us for the years that he had with us. Please join us in the fellowship hall. There are amazing varieties of ice cream. And all I'm telling you is because I already peeked and tried some yesterday. Uh, but we'll do it again uh, immediately following service here. And there's nothing wrong with having dessert before breakfast or before lunch, whatever meal it might be for you. Uh, so join us for that time following worship service. Uh, a couple other announcements I have. Uh, Saturday, August 12th is Faith and Family Night at Warner Park. Uh, you can reserve your tickets with our Rejoice group by August 3rd. Sign up online or at the Welcome Center, or you can visit with Mary, and I know she would uh, love to share more about that with you. Then also, uh, Backpack Blessings will be Saturday, August 12th and August 13th. Can you believe we're already at that time of year? We're talking about going back to school. How many people are super excited about that? Yeah, there we go. Dave, that's Maggie. I, I'm not even going to get into that. I'll talk to you two later. <laughs> No, that's great. Yeah, it is. It's that back to school time, so we will have backpack blessings August 12th and 13th. Bring your backpacks to worship. Give us a chance to kick off the year in wonderful fashion as we just pray a word of blessing upon our young people and upon our teachers and all those uh, that make our educational year such a wonderful success for, our, uh, for all people involved. And then one uh, last item that I would like to bring to your attention is our Rejoice Picnic will be Sunday, August 13th, again, immediately following backpack blessings after our later service. Uh, we will have our picnic from noon until 3, which is a little bit of change from where it's been in years past. It has typically been from like 4 till 7 or 7.30. This year it will be from noon until 3. Uh, held out, it'll be just as fun as it's always been, but please RSVP as you are able um, at the Welcome Center or again online as it helps us just organize how much food we're going to need because if you notice a theme around our announcements this week, we are eating and eating well here at Rejoice, and we have no plans on stopping, so uh, make sure you hook up for a wonderful time for that. We also need volunteers to help with that, and Mary would love to chat with you about ways that you can volunteer and make that picnic a success. Those are the announcements I have for us this day. I do invite you to peruse the back of your worship folder at your own leisure uh, to see where else you may connect with life here at Rejoice. And I just pray that our time together today is one that draws us into a deeper relationship with a God who loves us without limits. So with that being said, I invite you to stand as we center our hearts with a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin, reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefits. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us and in your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. reading is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Word of God, word of life. Please read Psalm 65 responsively. You are to be praised, O God in Zion, to you shall vows be fulfilled, to you the one who answers prayer, and to you all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous, and the river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The second reading is from the eighth chapter of Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. 
If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. That same day, Jesus went out to the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. And the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked to them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. seated. Well, good morning. It is a pleasure to be here with you on behalf of Bishop Scott Allen Johnson and all of the brothers and sisters in Christ of the 230-some congregations plus the ministries of the Nebraska Synod. I bring you greetings from all of your family in the ELCA. And I want to say to you, thank you. Thank you for the ways that you share the love of God with others, how you reach out and care, and you give God's grace to those who are in need. Thank you. But I'm also here as a member of the Synod staff to remind you that it isn't just about Rejoice Lutheran Church. You don't stand here alone, and you are aware of that, because we do work together, and we are able to do so much more because we are together, more than we could ever do alone. We are better together, is what we like to remind folks. And so consequently, together, we can raise up and train leaders for the church. And we're struggling with that right now, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. Together, we respond when there is disaster and need in our communities and throughout the world. And you know that there are a lot of organizations that do that kind of work. But I am here to tell you that through Lutheran Disaster Relief, Lutheran World Relief, through our agencies, the Lutherans are consistently the last people to leave when there has been a disaster. Because we don't just meet the basic needs that people have at that time, but we are there to help them to restore their lives, 
to restore relationships, and to find some new normal after tragedy has struck. That's who we are. Together we are better, and we reach out to those who are voiceless, the least, the last, the lost, and we let them know of God's care. I know it sounds trite, but I am telling you that there are people who are going to go to bed tonight thanking God for you, maybe not in name, but they are thanking God for the people who were there for them and offered them grace and hope and strength. And that's what we do together. So I say thank you for your part in that and encourage you to continue to seek out those ways that you can be a part of the church beyond your doors, beyond your community, and be a part of the church together with all of us. Just a little bit about me. I uh, most recently served Messiah Lutheran Church in Ralston. And uh, so we had a pretty strong connection with Rejoice. Often our youth would uh, do things with the youth of Rejoice. And so we went on lots of trips, work trips and uh, uh, ski trips and all kinds of things with this congregation. So we've always had kind of this special connection to this church. Before I was at Messiah, I served in uh, Hooper at Redeemer Lutheran Church for six years. Prior to that, I was out at uh, St. Paul's on staff there in Grand Island. And uh, so the journey has kept me in the area. And now since November 1st, I accepted this call to serve in, as an assistant to the bishop with Bishop Scott Allen Johnson. And uh, among other things, my primary duties are working with congregations in transition, which is what has brought me here today. As Pastor Brad has retired, um, I'd like to come into a congregation soon after a pastor has left just to help connect with you because I will be the principal person that will be working with your congregation. I've already been meeting with your council and your call committee. We are already at work on that. And again, I'll say more about that in just a little bit. But we want you to know that we are your partners as you make this transition and move into God's planned future for you. So today, uh, as a visiting preacher, I was going to say that I am asking for a bit of prerogative, but I'm really taking it because I'm not going to ask you whether I can preach on this or not. <laughs> but uh, I want to uh, uh, talk about some words from Sirach. Now, you may think, I don't remember hearing about that, that book of the Bible, and there might be good reason. It's part of the deuterocanonical books. These are the books that Luther thought were worth translating, so they were part of his German translation of Scripture, but he also recognized that they weren't quite on the same level as the rest of, of Scripture. And so he put them at the end of the Old Testament, and called them the Apocrypha, which means they don't carry the same weight as the rest of Scripture, but they are still good for us and useful for us to read. So these are words from Sirach, the third chapter. My child, perform your task with humility. Then you will be loved by those whom God accepts. The greater you are, the more you must humble yourself, so you will find favor in the sight of the Lord. For great is the might of the Lord, but by the humble he is glorified. Neither see, seek what is too difficult for you, nor investigate what is beyond your power. Reflect upon what you have been commanded, for what is hidden is not your concern. Do not meddle in matters that are beyond you, for more than you can understand has been shown to you. So those words I like to summarize this morning with simply this, that the, the writer of Sirach is saying to us, be humble and stay in your lane. Be humble and stay in your lane. These are uh, exciting times for rejoice and anxious times. 
It's exciting that Rejoice is a congregation, a community of faith that finds themselves where they are. You have been under the leadership of Pastor Brad and Pastor Daryl, and great things have happened here. You celebrate who Rejoice is, and you celebrate what you look forward to Rejoice still becoming in the future. And that's exciting, solid, energized, engaged people of God. But also it's an anxious time, right? Your leadership is not expected to count how many times they will be asked this question, but I can assure you it's going to be a lot. When are we going to get our new pastor? It's an anxious time. We want to know where our leadership will be. And as a congregation like Rejoice, that is so uh, vital and in invigorated we might just anticipate well who wouldn't want to be our leader so let the leaders come right <laughs> well not quite <laughs> there is a clergy shortage and there's lots of reasons for that I'm not going to get into that this morning if you want to know or talk more about that I'm happy to do that but this is an opportunity where it will probably take some time and part of that is also intentional. But I look at this, and I, I encourage you to look at this as a time that is an intentional pause. It's an opportunity. An opportunity that I believe God is using for reflection for you as a congregation. To reflect upon what is God's purpose and what is God's message for you. And we need to do that individually as congregations because that message can be different for each congregation. It's kind of like the, the seven churches that the book of Revelation was addressed to. When John wrote that, he listed out at the beginning the different churches. And for some churches, the message was you become lukewarm. You need to either be hot or cold. But if you're lukewarm, I spit you out of my mouth. For another church, the word was, you need to seek out your first love, which was God, because you've lost that, and so on and so on. And so this is a time for a congregation like Rejoice to pause and take this opportunity to hear what God has to say to you. So in the words of Sirach, one of those things to do is to humble ourselves. Did you notice that it said, the greater you are, the more important it is to be humble? And so I tell you as a congregation that is thriving and who has vitality to it, be careful. Because it's real easy for us as human beings, and this is a human trait no matter who we are or where we are, to think that we get the credit, right? <laughs> We want to think we're as, as vibrant, as successful, however you want to define that word, because of what we have done. And so God reminds us to be humble. And then the second thing that Sirach reminds us is stay in your lane. Do what God has commanded you to do and not more. We remember that Jesus... Uh, to his disciples, he told them he would build the church. It's never been a command for us from Christ to build churches. He said, upon the, the confession of faith, I will build my church. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to make disciples. Go, baptize, teach. And I want you to love God and I want you to love your neighbor. That's what he's called us to do. That's what's within our lane. So as a congregation, I hope that this will be a time where in humbling yourself and staying in your lane, you don't forget who's in charge of this whole process, this time of transition. And that's not just a word for the congregation. 
I don't know about you, but I have found myself in my life at per certain times at maybe transitions or crossroads or when things have happened and, and, and I, I begin to, to become anxious. And then I start trying to, to press into things that I think I should be doing or that, that I think should be happening. And I try to force the good that I think I know needs to happen. Or I try to force back the darkness and the shadows. And that creates this anxiety. It creates even fear and panic. And we begin to think, well, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? My life just seems so out of control. Now, I don't want to oversimplify or overgeneralize, but this might be a word for you too. Perhaps in those times, we are becoming concerned about matters that are not ours to be concerned about. And we can hear this word from God too. Be humble and stay in your lane. Last night, I did have a discussion with, uh, with one of the attendees who is a grandma, and she says, well, I know my sons would tell me that I'm getting in their lane way too much. And I said, well, you know, that's what mothers and grandmas are supposed to do, right? But still, we can ask ourselves that. Am I meddling in what is God's to do? Am I doing more than I am called to do? There's a couple of things I want to suggest to you today that you can do uh, to, to stay humble and stay in your lane. The first one is that as you feel that anxiety to read and to study Scripture with the lens that focuses on what is God doing in this text. Because often what we tend to do with Scripture is we look at it and we say, okay, what do I got to do? You know, we're good at that as Midwesterners. Just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Well, let's spend some time focusing on what God is doing. And the Scriptures today lend themselves to that very well. In that Isaiah text, God says, it is my word that goes out, and it is my purpose that is accomplished through that word as it returns. In the psalm, did you hear everything God is doing? The psalmist says God makes and answers and stills and visits and prepares and drenches and crowns. The Romans text is the heart of the gospel for us this morning as it declares that it is Christ who makes us free. We do not free ourselves by our work or our efforts or by being a part of a congregation that is vital and thriving. It is Christ who sets us free. And it is Christ who will make God's plan come to fruition. And so study the scriptures with an eye towards what God is doing. The second thing that I suggest that you do is spend some time with the spiritual practice of examine. Now, I know that you have spiritual directors in your congregation, and they can be a great resource for you with this. And in just my little bit of time to you, I want to tell you that, that examine is, is basically taking the opportunity to reflect, to do internal reflection, to honestly assess. And this is how we started our worship this morning, right? With our confession of acknowledging where we have gotten out of our lane, acknowledging when we think more of ourselves than we should. The practice of examine is honestly assessing and asking yourself, have I gotten too big for my britches? <laughs> Am I getting into God's business? Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. I stole that phrase from Reggie McNeil in some of his books. Don't hear what I'm not saying. This doesn't mean I'm telling you, well, you just sit on your hands and wait for God to make things happen. That's not the point. It doesn't mean that you do nothing. 
but you do what God has called you to do and to do it humbly within your lane. I am here to tell you that uh, rejoice for rejoice, we will work hard. The Senate office, our mobility team that includes the bishop as well as assistance to the bishop, your leadership on your council and your call committee, they will be working hard. They will be working hard to listen to God in this time. They will be working hard to listen to one another, to you as a congregation, to hear what you have to say and how you see God at work through you. And they will work hard to listen to your community, to your neighbors. Who are the people that we are called to proclaim the good news to? And what are the needs? And how most effectively can we proclaim that gospel? We'll work hard at those things. They will work hard to clearly communicate your vision and your mission to those potential leaders. We as a team together will do our due diligence. I will assure you of that. But never forget, as you do what you have been called to do as an individual, your call from Christ to love God and to love neighbors, each of us, as we do those things, we must never forget that Christ, through his life of love, Christ, through his sacrifice of a never-ending and unconditional love, through his victory in his death, over his death, and in the resurrection and over sin, that is what makes us who we are. Not our efforts, not our abilities, not our work, not our effort, and even not our worry and our anxiety. God will continue to make God's word yield. I forgot that part. I didn't go on through the rest of the lessons. Matthew is a wonderful story about God sowing the seed of love and kindness, justice and mercy recklessly. And it is God who produces the yield. God will continue to yield love and mercy and forgiveness and grace. And so in some sense, God says to you today, wait for it, humbly, and in your lane. Amen.
Let us now confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation and throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Sustain your creation, O God, by sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Hear us, O God. Maintain peace among all people, O God, and raise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Hear us, O God. Heal those who are sick, O God. Guide healthcare workers to care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life-saving research, and counselors to care for victims of sexual abuse and exploitation. Lord, this day we lift up especially the prayers of this congregation as we remember Karen West, Kevin Hausch, and Sam Weston. Continue to pour your spirit of strength and peace into them and surround them with your angels here on earth to give them the strength for this day and the days ahead. We also pray that the hope and the promise of the resurrection of your son Jesus Christ brings uh, comfort to Dennis Wagner as he grieves the death of his brother. Lord, we offer you these prayers and any others that are in our hearts as we continually pray your will be done. Hear us, O God. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O God. Protect those who travel near and far. Accompany visitors to this congregation and nurture our faith. Hear us, O God. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God, examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another at this time.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see the Lord is good. All are welcome at the Lord's table. You may be seated.
invite you to stand. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare to depart this place here for another day, uh, just a reminder to please join us in the Fellowship Hall again for uh, ice cream treats as we celebrate the life of Dominic Walters, and we also get a chance to uh, say good morning to Pastor Greg, and again, thank him for being here with us this day. So at this point, receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.